This is a tricky little problem. We've got a quadratic to a quadratic equals one. Effectively, we've just got some value to some other value here equals one. Once I've chosen values of x, I'll just have a number to another number equals one. So if we think about all the different cases where I can have a to the power of b equals one, there are really three cases we can have here. If we raise one to any power, we always get one. If I raise minus one to a power, I might also get one as well if that power is an even number. For example, minus one squared is one, minus one to the power of four is one, and so on. For any even power, that will work. And the other way that I could get one here is if the power b is zero. So if I do a to the power of zero, then I'm going to get one. And that will be true just so long as a isn't equal to zero. So for our original problem, we've got three cases to consider. First case corresponding to one to the power of b is equal to one would just be to solve x squared plus three x plus one is equal to one. And it doesn't matter what the uh, power it's raised to here is, whatever uh, we get there we know will work. In the second case, we could have x squared plus 3x plus 1 equals minus 1. But in this case, we would also have to make sure that x squared minus 5x plus 4 is an even number. And then we'll be in this case of minus 1 to an even power is equal to 1. And in the third case, we could have uh, x squared minus 5x plus 4 is equal to 0. and we would just also want to double check that in that case, x squared plus three x uh, plus one is not equal to zero. Now each of these cases is quite easy to deal with. In the first one, we've got x squared plus three x plus one equals one. So subtracting one from each side gives me x squared plus three x equals zero. Then I can factorize the left-hand side here to get x times x plus three equals zero. And that gives us either x equals zero or x equals minus three. In the second case, we want to solve x squared plus three x plus one equals minus one. So that gives me x squared plus three x plus two equals zero. And this one I can factorize as x plus two times x plus one equals zero. And that gives me x equals minus two or uh, x equals minus one. For this one, we do just need to check that x squared minus five x plus four would give us an even number. So for x equals minus two, if I do minus two squared minus five times minus two plus four, that gives me four plus 10 plus four, which is 18, so that's even. And for minus one, I get minus one squared minus five times minus one plus four, that gives me one plus five plus four, that's 10, that's even as well. So both of these cases do give me genuine solutions here. And then our final case where we're trying to make the power here x squared minus five x plus four equal to zero. Again, I can just factorize this so I get uh, x minus four times x minus one equals zero. And this time that gives me x equals four uh, or x equals one. And we just might want to double check that for those values of x, this expression here is not equal to zero. But these are both positive values. All the terms here are going to be positive. So this will be a positive number raised to the power of zero. And that will certainly uh, give us one. So we found six possible solutions here. If we put all of the answers together, we just know that x is one of the values minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one, or four. And that's the answer to the problem. If you like math problems like this, then you might be interested in the answer to the question, how many zeros are there on the end of 100 factorial or even 1000 factorial or many other numbers? I've answered that question in this video here, so hopefully I'll see you there.